Well, welcome back to our class on algorithms and data structures. We're continuing to make some progress here as we're getting into some of the, the basics here, um, talking about um, bags. <clears throat> and so in this chapter, we're going to do um, a little bit of a follow-on to bag implementations that use arrays with the second Java interlude, and then we'll get on to bag implementation. So let's um, go in and do this interlude first. This will be a relatively a short lecture. So and I, we're going to be talking about exceptions, and um, exceptions are a useful thing that is done quite well in Java. An exception is an unusual circumstance or event that occurs during the execution of a method thereby interrupting the program execution. Some exceptions indicate mistakes in code. By correcting those mistakes, you can avoid the exceptions and no longer have to worry about them. In fact, your final code gives no indication that an exception could occur. Furthermore, if your code is entirely correct, an exception will not occur. On the other hand, a programmer can intentionally cause an exception to occur under certain conditions. In fact, the programmers who wrote the code for the Java class library did so. If you examine the documentation for the library, you will see names of the exceptions that might occur during the execution of certain methods. We need to know about it, exceptions so we can use these methods. What should we do when an exception occurs? Should we ever intentionally cause an exception in our own programs? And if so, how would we do so? These are some of the questions that this interlude, this discussion on Java will we'll discuss. So this knowledge is particularly important to us as we discuss ADT operations that fail. So here's a, the textbook chapter context. And so you can see that we'll talk about the basics and then we'll talk about the different ways of handling an exception. And then finally have a, a discussion on throwing an exception. So here's the, the basics. When an exception occurs within a method, the, the method creates an exception object that gives it to the Java runtime system. We say that a method throw is the exception. A throw, throw an exception is a signal to the rest of the program that something unexpected has happened. Our code can react appropriately to an exception based on, on its class type and what the execution as the object can tell us via the methods. We handle the exception when we detect and react to it. So exceptions belong to various classes, but all of these classes have the standard class throwable as an ancestor. Throwable is the class, the Java class library, and is available to us without an import statement. Exceptions are classified into three groups. So there's checked exceptions, which must be handled runtime exceptions would need not be handled and errors which need not be handled and so those are a couple classifications to keep in mind so let's talk about checked exceptions checked exceptions are the result of a serious occurrence during program execution for example the program is reading data from a disk and the system cannot find the file that contains the data a checked exception will occur the name of the class to which this exception belongs is file not found exception. Um, maybe that the user gave the program the wrong file name, a well written program should anticipate this event and recover gracefully from it, perhaps by asking the user to enter the file name again. This name, like the names of all exception classes in the Java class library, is meant to describe the cause of the exception. Common practice is to describe an exception by its class name. For example, we might say that a file not found exception has occurred. All classes of checked exceptions are subclasses of the standard class exception, which is a descendant of throwable. Checked exceptions in the library class library so um, what are what are these? And so the, the following classes in the Java class library represent some of the checked exceptions that you might encounter. And as we list them here, class not found exception, file not found exception, IO exception, no such method exception, and write abort, aborted exception. Okay, so that's the first set of um, exceptions. The next one is the runtime exceptions. Runtime exceptions are the result of a logical error in the program. For example, an out-of-bounds array index causing, causes an exception of the class 
array index out of bounds. A, a division by zero causes an arithmetic exception, although we could add code that would handle a runtime exception. We usually just need to fix the mistakes in our program. All classes of runtime exceptions are subclasses of the class runtime exception, which is the descendant of the exception. Runtime exceptions in the Java class library, let's um, list them here. And so that the following classes in the Java class library represent some of the runtime exceptions that you are likely to encounter. So we have them listed here, arithmetic exception, array index out of bounds exception, class cast exception, empty stack exception, illegal argument exception, illegal state exception, index out of bound exception, no such element exception, no pointer exception, and unsupported operation expect exception. And here is a hierarchy of all of the exceptions. So an error is an object of either the standard class error or one of its descendant classes. We will refer to such a class as error classes. Note that error is a descendant of throwable. In general, an error indicates the occurrence of an abnormal situation, such as a run running out of memory. If your program uses more memory than is available, you must either revise your program to make it more efficient in its use of memory, change a setting to, to let Java access more memory or buy more memory for your computer. These situations are too serious for a typical program to handle, hence errors need not be handled even though doing so is legal. So in the figure, we show the hierarchy of some of the exception in error classes. Um, runtime exceptions, such as the arithmetic run exceptions are descendants from the runtime exception. Checked exceptions as the IO exceptions are descendants from exceptions, but not from runtime exception. And an assertion error from, um, which we discussed previously is an object of the class assertion error, which has a, the class error as a superclass. When we discuss recurrent Recursion in chapter seven, we will mention the stack overflow error. This error belongs to the stack overflow error. Both stack overflow error and out of memory error are derived from the abstract class virtual machine error, which has error as a superclass. Right now, all of that is important to us is knowing that stack overflow error, out of memory error, error and assertion error have error instead of exception as it's an ancestor class, although all exceptions and errors derive from throwable. So it's a little bit of perspective to keep in mind. So let's talk about handling an exception. When a checked exception might occur, it must be handled somewhere. For a method that might cause a checked exception, you have two choices, handle the exception within the method or postpone handling it by telling the method's client to do so. Um, for postpone handling, uh, you when we get into the, the throws clause. And so um, yeah, imagine a method that returns the string it reads from a disk. Since we will learn how to write such a method um, as, as we move on here, let, let's not worry about how this method accomplishes its task. However, something might go wrong while reading from the disk that something could generate an IO exception. Since an IO exception is checked, it is a checked exception, it must be handled. We could handle the exception with the, the method's body. Sometimes, however, a programmer is not sure what action is best for a client when an exception occurs. Should an uh, execution end or would another action make more sense. When you're not sure what action to take, you can leave the handling of an exception to the method's client. As long as the exception is handled at some point, you need not handle it within the method itself. A method that can cause but does not handle a, a checked exception must declare that, that fact in its header. For example, if the method read string might throw an IO exception but does not handle it, its header should looks something like public string, read string, throws IO exception. So let's talk about handling an exception with the try catch block then. And so um, you can think of the, the area here that we're showing on this, this chart here. Um, 
in, in a, a throws closet, it frees the method read string of the response of hailing any exception of the IO of the type IO exception that might occur during the execution. If, however, another method calls read string, it must deal with the exception. The invoking method can either handle the IO exception itself or tell its client to handle the exception by including it in a throwable clause in its header. Eventually, every thrown except um, checked exception should be handled somewhere in your program. You can, you can list more than one checked exception in a throws clause by separating their names with commas. So, um, to handle an exception, we first, first identify the Java statements that, that cause it. We also must decide which exception to, to look for. A method's documentation and throw clause will tell us what checked exceptions might occur. It is those exceptions that we will handle. The code to handle an exception consists of two pieces. The first piece, the try block, contains the statements that might throw an exception. The second piece consists of one or more catch blocks. Each catch block contains code to, to react to or catch a particular type of exception. Thus, the code to handle an IO exception as a result of invoking the method um, read string um, it would be what we would, would be using. So in the chart here, we're, we're showing the multiple catch blocks and and so just to keep that in mind. So um, in terms of throwing an exception, although the ability to handle exception is quite useful, knowing how to throw an exception is also important. So here we, we look at how exceptions are thrown. You, you should throw an exception within a, a method only in an unusual or unexpected situation that you cannot resolve within the method in a reasonable way. So the, for the, the throw statement, a method intentionally throws an exception by executing the throw statement. In general form, it, it throws exception object. Rather than creating the exception object in a separate step, programmers usually create the object within the throw statement as in, in the following statement, um, throw new IO exception. So this statement creates a, a new object of the class IO exception that throws it, just as we show um, should catch as specified an exception as, as possible. The exceptions we throw should be as specific as possible. Although we, we can evoke the default constructor of the exception class as it, in the previous example, we can also provide the constructor with a string as an argument. The resulting object will contain the string in a data field and both the object and the string will be available to the catch block that handles the exception. The catch block then can use the exceptions method get message to retrieve the string, um, which we did, talked about before. The, the default constructor provides a, a default value for such a string. Okay, well, that ends our discussion, um, giving an overview for exceptions. Thank you very much.